I'm so happy to have a chance to talk to the Walter and Wayne Gretzky of American Fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, uh, no greater so, Canadian, no Canadian uh, compliment. compliment. Wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> Either you're, one of you're them. Ofi- <laughs> you're officially citizens now. If you guys want to move back, it's done. It's already, it's already taken care of. Well, welcome to the show, boys. How are you? See you. Good. How are you? Um, let's let's start out, uh, Kurt. How so? First, first off the bat, you got to spend time on set with your son. You got to spend time in post with your son, and now you got to spend a lot of time promoting the film with your son. How's that going? Well, the, <clears throat> the truth is that this is the most time we've spent with each other since Wyatt was playing hockey in Vancouver, and or probably even before that. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, yeah, it was, it's an interesting introduction because I grew up watching my dad in a business that he seemed to be having fun in, but he had been a professional baseball player. I grew up, I had an acumen for that game, and I went into acting because it was a nice way to make money that you, better, a lot better than a paper route, but baseball was my future, uh, and I played it professionally. When he was growing up in our family, he took to hockey, so we had to get him at the age of 14, I was told, by uh, uh, Don Edwards, you got you need to get out of here. You need to either go to Toronto or Vancouver. We went to Vancouver, where he played junior hockey for years there, and then went into college, and then went and played pro hockey in Europe. Uh, that's really the up. Uh, that was that's really the that's really what's in our background. That's what's what's weird about our lives is acting is the creative fun that we've had, but we learned. I think we probably learned more about ourselves and how we can. Uh, function best um, in in the world of professional sports. Let me just stay, stay with that for a second, and, and, and Kurt, I'm going to just stay with you for a second on that. Uh, that's That goes against, you're right, what my assumptions were. My, I, I knew about your dad's history in, in baseball, and I know about your history in baseball, and I definitely know about why it's world of hockey, and I, I was hoping to talk about that at some point. But I would have guessed that that would have been, I mean, the story I'm often told, I would have guessed that it was you on the Bonanza lot Watching your never, dad. Never, never, never spent a day on the Bonanza lot. I went, I went to you, my dad's set twice. <laughs> twice. I would have thought you would have watched him on TV and said, "Oh, that's that's what I want to do." Really? No, no, I, no. I had a paper route, and I wanted to make money faster than I could make it on that paper route. So I started talking to my dad about that and figured that out. But you know, as far as it translating into what my life was going to become, I was probably a blessing in disguise that I got injured and I loved my life and. I have used a lot of what I've what I learned in that world, um, and applied it to this one. Wyatt, there's a, a, a couple of weird parallels here, aren't there? <laughs> there are definitely some parallels. <laughs> there are definitely some parallels. Um, uh, it's it, yeah, I think it, you could look at it as as odd in a way, um, but then when you really when you really think about it, it's sort of the same as my, my dad. Like when I got done playing hockey. Uh, there was a couple things that I was like, well, maybe I'll go to school for architecture. That was something that was in my head. Or maybe I'll go back to school um, because I, I thought psychology would be interesting. Actually, my brother ended up being a psychologist. Um, those were things swirling in my head. But as I, when I was heard, it was like, well, I do, I would like to make money quick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I got a business that for you. That seemed good. <laughs> um, and then I went and I, and I, and I, I thought, and then I really thought, I went to a directing course at USC for, for uh, a summer before I stopped playing hockey. And I had a blast. I loved it. I loved learning about film. Uh, m- I loved watching movies. I loved making friends that weren't hockey players or athletes. They were all come from different walks of life. It was a really great experience for me. And I thought, well, I love making movies. Maybe I'll be a director. Then as I came back, it was like, well, do I want to spend the next seven years of my life doing what I just did for the past 15, which is like banging your brick head, banging your head against a brick wall (laughs) and hoping that something can happen. And, you know, you're the one leading the charge in a lot of ways. And I was like, you know, I think I could be good at acting. I think I could learn, obviously, a lot if I ever do want to make movies or anything like that, that obviously the best place to learn that is on a movie set. And so I, I auditioned. I got little parts and stuff here and there. I'd always make it a point to go to the sound guy and go, okay, what are, what are you doing? And I'd go to the camera department and hang out with them. And I'd go to these different places. That was something that my dad said he did. And that was actually that was actually a piece of advice you told me to do when people ask, like, what's the best advice? Now, that did is that, a good I advice. did that instead of going to college because I quit college. Right. <laughs> I got to learn like, something. <laughs> it is good advice. Like, go learn what every department does. 
yeah. and like you know really learn what they do and you empathize with them and you, it makes you better everything but as as it began I was like okay well, you know this is kind of fun and, and then and then one thing rolled into another and 15 years later I've have not directed a film and <laughs> I enjoy <laughs> acting hopefully one day the the bug gets me but right now um, yeah it led it led me in that direction the, the, the other odd parallel is that similarly, like, again, I would have guessed just like with Kurt, you know, and his dad, he would he would have watched TV and said, oh, I want to do that. Why? I would have thought, you know, growing up with 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 film and TV all around you, you might be sitting around and going like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe that's maybe that's the world for me. But it, it turns out it was sports. It was sports is sort of the path that you were led on. It has the exact opposite effect on on me. Um, and it was because two things. One, I was very close to my parents and they were great parents. They were around. uh uh, more than any other parents were around and uh, able to be around. I always had one parent at least if one at home if one was working. And because of that, uh, because we lived like a relatively normal family life, not normal life, just our family unit was prioritized, then going out in public was like this sort of shocker. It was like, <laughs> oh my God, like going to the mall was, you know, sometimes like a bit of a nightmare. Going to a Kings game was like, ah, fuck, you know, I got to deal with these people who, you know, they're, they they all want my, my dad's attention and you're just trying to be there. So that was like, this is the last thing in the world I want to do. <laughs> and, 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 and how you really gain respect in life is like, show somebody that you can work hard. And hockey was a great avenue for that because there's really no getting around success without hard work and that felt like a very easy way to show people that I was a hard worker and, and that was going to be how I became my own person. I've talked to a couple, I mean this is Canada right, so I've talked to a couple of hockey players who ended up getting into the arts, he started acting or doing music after after they you know they either get injured or they didn't make it to the to the NHL or you know or whatever and um They've said a, a similar kind of thing to me about, I always ask that question, you know, what do you learn from one that applies to the other? When I first started asking that question, I thought it was nothing. And then more and more people have said this to me, that when you're in professional sports at a high level, when you lose, you're heartbroken, you're, you're destroyed, but you got to get over it because you got a game in baseball, I guess, the next day. Because you got to eat. Hockey. Right. Yeah. If you make, yeah, your, yeah. If you make your living yeah, playing yeah, a game, yeah. you got to eat. I mean, I step yeah. into the batter's box, and that guy on the mound is trying to take food out of mine, and I'm trying to take food out of his. If that if that strikes you as something that's kind of fun, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have the right attitude. If it scares you or if it makes you insecure, you better get the hell out of that game because that that guy on that, that guy out there, he, if he's any good, he, nah, he's he's going after it. And you say, oh, well, here we go. Let's bring it on. Let's go. Let's see what we got. That's either fun for you, and you continue to learn and get better. And if it's not fun, you can't learn. I've heard it's also rejection. Because you face so much rejection in film and TV, losing in professional sports and having to get over it so quickly yeah. helps you, yeah. Helps yeah. you yeah. deal yeah. with rejection. It helps you learn that there is not such a thing as rejection. Yeah. Because when you lose in sports or you, <coughs> you know, make the playoffs, you lose the playoff round, you whatever, the loss, experience loss. You've experienced actual competition in a way, like my dad just said, like that person is literally going to physically put their body on the line to stop you from succeeding. And there's a, a real opponent. When you, first time I walked into an audition room, it was like, oh my God, like everybody wants me to be good. Like everybody's yeah. rooting for you. Nobody's <laughs> not rooting for you. Like, okay, maybe the guys in the other room are like, well, but. That, but I, I quickly came to realize, like, you either basically, for the most part, yeah. walk into the room and have the job or don't. That's and the thing. is right there, right there. The analogy for me would be you walk into the room, they really want you to be good. And in baseball, they, you know, I'm, I wasn't a pitcher, but we really like this guy great. And you just take them out and you go, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. We're looking for a left-hander. You're right-handed. Right. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. We're we're looking for a left-hander. Oh, <laughs> all right, man. Where's the uh, door? Right. I mean, you don't leave there going, "I was rejected." You leave there saying, "They weren't looking for me." Right. <clears throat> that's that's it. That's that's yeah. if that's rejection, then I, I think I don't think that's rejection. I think that's like I, they weren't looking for me. Right. Let, let, let me ask uh, you an acting question here. When you play older and younger versions of the of the same character. How do you work together to make sure it's believable decades in between? 
you, really, it's before the you, you step foot on on set. So, um, again, linking it to sports, uh, same way. It's like ninety percent of its preparation. It's the same thing in in movies for me, at least. I, b I believe in preparation. And my dad obviously does too. So that it has to be on the page before you go. Like you can't just all of a sudden make it up and it just appears and happens and there's this magical link that, that, that occurs. It's, it's all really done before. And so we made sure that the character of Lee was someone we both wanted to play. And uh, in doing that, that, needed, that, mean, that meant that you know, Lee Shaw in the present, played by my dad uh, in 2015, 2014, he, he needed to be uh, someone who had seen it all. He had seen the monsters. He had seen the dark side of the world. Um, and I needed to play a person that was going to become that, but hadn't seen those things yet and needed to, to become a believer. Uh, and so, you know, that was the challenge in, in, in creating that through line. Yeah, we, we, <clears throat> we took that thought, and we and you have to realize in this situation it was just a casting idea it wasn't written the way it is now it was a casting idea so we had to we had to look at that and go well how, how do we make, how do we make it a seamless same person character and we don't want to do the father-son thing and we can't make that mistake so it is in the preparation of it so in the in the process of that working with Matt Fraction and, and Chris Black um, we had to find purpose for this guy so that he could tie the two time periods together but the audience had to be completely of the, the mindset, yeah, that's the same guy. It's not father and son. That would have been disastrous. Like mannerisms, like physical mannerisms, that kind of stuff? We knew we had similar uh, mannerisms. We, we, we know that's true. But our rhythms are very different. And that was something we, that I certainly had to pay attention to. Um, he was laying the character down from what we'd all talked about and what was all written. But once you see it, that was I was fortunate enough to be able to go on his set because we were shooting at the same time. But I was fortunate enough to be able to go on his set. I had some days off, and I watched him, and it was like it was really. First of all, it was really bizarre because I was no longer just watching him. I was watching an actor play <laughs> play the role that I'm also going to play, and I was like, okay. Uh, and he's re he was you know he was automatically doing everything. I th looked at it and I said, oh, okay, that's really good. That's really good. That's really good. Oh, that's different than okay. Yeah, okay. You know, so it was very helpful to me. Um, and I don't know if, if there was a reverse to that for you. Uh, it didn't, you know, you're laying it out, so. Yeah, there was just moment, like, there's just things that um, I, uh, we both have different charismas and uh, at different times, it's not the same. And so there were moments where you know, I needed to know that, okay, in this moment, like, you just kind of have to take center stage a little more than you normally would think you need to, um, and, and have, a, you know, walk with a little more gusto. I, I'm, I'm rather laid back. Um, I've played not laid back characters, but, but like in Falcon Winter Soldier, he's a character that's like a bull in a china shop. Like, everything was like built in a over a little bit over the top way in my head and then you like pair it back so you're playing it real but it's like a character he's he's not uh, kind of a normal person and Lee's kind of a normal person so to play those moments like my dad would in certain times like he, it, it was a little bit more difficult because I had to play it real but it wasn't always going to be the way I would play it real. It was going to be the way my dad would play it real. And so you, you had those in the back of your head. It wasn't like thinking about that the entire time, but it was definitely in the back of my head. But, but what's going on in the back of my head right now is that, and, and listen, I'm, I'm not an actor, so this is, this is maybe a bit reductive, but I find it interesting. This is someone you've grown up in the same house with. Like, this, you're, like you're examining the acting of someone, like a family member. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty wild. Very different. <clears throat> For me, um, in our family, the fact that to people on the outside of our family, there may be some sort of uh, reality that they have in their head about what our children are dealing with in terms of who they think we might be at home. 
Why it's two things, right? When when we're growing up, he's creating his own life, but he's also ha he ha hey, we're there just to, if he falls off the curb a little, we were there to do it. He didn't fall off the curb very much. I don't know how we look at pressure differently, also because of sports. People don't, you know, in our business, pressure is is very different. It's got nothing to do with the fact that there's twenty thousand people out there screaming at you with a runner on the tying run on third and you're hitting yeah two with outs. a ninety eight mile that's per pressure. hour fastball that's going you, at your yeah, head. You gotta, that's, you know, and that's pressure. And yeah. if you're on the road, they're they're saying things that are you, you you just have to put the fact that they're really funny out of your head. We'll laugh about it later. But right now, you just gotta look for something white and hit it. But uh, I, you know, um, so he grew up that way. So I didn't I I didn't even I never think about why in terms of what he might be, I don't know, concerning himself with in, in, in that way, and certainly even on our movie. It's all the preparation. For me, I was realizing how good he was, and that just made me feel great. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it just made me feel like, oh, great, you know. I didn't even really think about that. I didn't think about it. It's like, oh, yeah, that, he's already elevating it. And, uh, God, you know, it's like, I'm, okay, great. Just go, go to work, do your thing. I mean, you know, do play the part the way you guys have talked about it. That there was that was a relief, like you know. That's a that's a that's a that's a beautiful thing. Listen, I got I got a couple of minutes left. I just kind of want to ask. I got a couple more questions before they put a laser pointer in my head and take me out. The um, Kurt, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about how the, these kinds of films have changed over the years. Like if we look back to like when you were filming like The Thing or something like that, you want to talk about like practical effects. The thing that you were acting with, the monster that you were acting with was a physical thing in the room with you for the most part. Sometimes, in, yeah. Yeah for, yeah, for the most part. In a movie like this, it's very different, you know, CGI and, and computer animated. I guess just, you know, how, how different is it acting in that genre now versus back in the early 80s? A little bit of a little bit of a uh, disappointing answer, I'm sure, but not much. Um, I worked when I was a young guy at Disney. A lot of blue screen stuff. Uh, I'd, I'd done wire gags, oh, lots of them, and um, I, I sort of knew the world. I mean, you know, you you got a storyboard to work off of. The storyboards are even better now. Now it's not just a flat storyboard. It's called a previs, and it's it's kind of a poor man's version of what the thing's going to really be. Oh, you know exactly. You know exactly what you, you know exactly pretty much what it's going to do. Uh, you can fall in love with that, which I think is a little dangerous. But the uh, yeah, back in the day, you just was it was the puppetry of Rob Bottin and the thing, for instance, was you know, fantastic. It was just unbelievable stuff. And hard not to laugh at it sometimes because it was so it was so cool. But weren't you acting against something? Like, I mean, I'm trying not to be like an old-fashioned guy wearing like, like suspenders and they, a barrel, you know, the, you know, like, gobo you know? black, you know, black gobos with you know black gobos, right? That they put over lights and stuff. Had a big gobo yeah. with an X on it. <laughs> but hey, listen, there were times here we were working with a pole and a tennis ball, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, still in the same world. <laughs> uh, um, um, what about like learning about a franchise? Like why? Like the show Monarch is part of the Godzilla franchise. Um, it's a huge fandom. I mean, you've been part of big franchises before with Captain America and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But when you take on a role with this kind of history as like the Godzilla, how much do you immerse yourself in the history of the franchise or, or are you just kind of taking it page by page? Um, I, 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 I took it page by page because I didn't know anything about the Godzilla franchise. Um, not that I didn't see the movies or like the movies. It was just something that I didn't, I didn't watch them. I don't know why. It was, I, I, honestly, I think it was because I was playing hockey so much. Like I just wasn't going to movies. It wasn't. There was movie culture, and then there was like sports culture, and I was fully sports culture guy uh, during the time of these movies really being released and getting big and creating fandom. And so that now, when I when it came time to do this or even the Marvel stuff, it felt like to me. Um, I didn't, my, my biggest thing is I never want to play the result of a character or the result of a scene. If you have that in your head and then you're playing the result of that, then like you are not playing the moment. You're not living in the moment. With this and Lee, Young Lee particularly, it's 19, it's before Godzilla. No, no one knows yeah. Godzilla exists. So it, it, it was totally beneficial that I had no idea about what was lore or what could be uh, yeah, violated. Right. I didn't know any of that. It was great. I didn't either. I mean, I, I I saw Godzilla when I was a kid, but didn't follow it. But I've watched them in the movies a couple times. Godzilla versus King Kong, they did some great CGI stuff in that. But we were kind of... <laughs> 
<laughs> there was a thing with my, with the name of the character. I believe in I believe in great names for characters. <laughs> the, the name was Leland Lafayette Shaw the Third. Well, actually, but they called him they called him Lee Shaw. And I said, that's just a boring name. Let's get something better. And, I, and they kept like they they never just came out. Nobody ever came out and said. Finally, they somebody said like weeks into what, when we were working with them writing. You know, Lee Shaw is a part of the. Godzilla lore. He's a, he's he's a person. All right. We went. Uh, yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah. Let somebody say <laughs> something. I don't know. Lee Shaw is. We can't. You know, a comic book writer. Get a name, sure, dude. Sure. You know, I'll call, you know, I'll call him. You know, Reno Hightower for Christ's sake. Get some, you know, let's, let's get a name in here. Well, well, listen. I'm I'm getting the rap. I'm so happy to have a chance to talk to the Walter and Wayne Gretzky of American Fans. Uh... <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, no greater so, Canadian, no Canadian compliment. Uh, compliment. Uh, I mean, wow. Uh, Either you're, one of you're them. <laughs> you're officially citizens now. If you guys want to move back, it's done. It's already, it's already taken care of. Uh, thanks a lot for the time, guys. Congratulations right, on the show. Great. See ya.